Comedy Forecast is the official podcast of Mismatched Socks, Captains of Industry, Generators, and Bingo. The Comedy Forecast Network. Let's dog ear this for now. Comedy Forecast, episode 458, Sean at Sea. Bringing you the funny since 2005, it's the Comedy Forecast Comedy Podcast, powered by its patrons. For as little as a dollar, you can help support the show and get episodes before everyone else. To find out more, just search for Comedy Forecast, all one word with the number four, on Patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Or go to ComedyForecast.com and click on the Patreon link on the page. Thank you. Sean at Sea here from Sailing Seas Cruise Vacations for You.com. Coming to you today from beautiful South Coast. I'm getting ready to head out on another fantastic seven days, four nights cruise on board the brand new festival cruise line ship, Gulag Archipelago of the Seas. Look for my trip reports on that in a few weeks. But before I sail, I wanted to get to some of the questions you all have been leaving in the comments section. So let's get to it, shall we? The first question comes to us from Hockey Mom 2018. That's a great name, super descriptive. She writes, Hi, Sean. Well, hello to you, Hockey Mom. Love your show. Oh, thank you again. My husband, our two sons, and I are going on our first cruise this June. Oh, how exciting. We're flying down to Miami for the cruise. Double exciting. Is it okay to fly down early on the morning of the cruise? cruise. Oh, no, 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 Hockey Mom. Why would you do that to yourself? You could spoil your whole vacation. What happens if your flight is delayed? What if your luggage gets lost or there's a traffic jam when you're leaving the airport? Your cruise ship is not going to wait for you. Do not fly down that morning. It is not worth it. Here's a Sean secret. It's much better to fly down the night before and stay in a hotel near the port. That way you can check in, get to bed early, and spend the night before the cruise worrying about whether or not your alarm will go off in the morning. Oh, but that's simple. Just test it to make sure that it works and that it's loud enough. And it should be. It should be fine. So then just go ahead and lie down. But you might wake up in the middle of the night because you're not sure that you put the alarm on again after the last time you tested it. And come to think of it, did you really plan on getting up early enough? Think about it. How long will it take you to get ready in the morning? Because you'll have to do some repacking. Packing? Where did you put your passport? You need your passport. So you'll get up, open up your backpack to make sure that the passport is there. And <laughs> It is. Ah, thank goodness. And since you're up, now's a good time to take the airline tags off your luggage and put the cruise ship tags on. Uh, where are they? Where are they? Oh, there they are. In with the passport. So you put those on and now you can go back to sleep. But, uh, did you put the passport back where you found it? Better check. Oh, good. It's there. But since you're up again, you can double check the alarm. Then you realize you didn't think about how much time it's going to take you to get from your room to where the shuttle will be waiting in the morning. How long will that take? Should you use the stairs or wait for the elevator? Because there's always that person who holds up the elevator on their floor while their whole family slowly gets on. And then they take up so much room that you can't get in that one anyway. And when you finally get to the lobby, what about the shuttle? Will it get you to the port on time? I mean, logically it will. After all, they do this all the time, right? But what if this is the driver's first day? Hmm? And where does the shuttle pick you up in the first place? What if you're waiting at the front and there's some secret side door that you don't know anything about? Who can you ask? The front desk? Well, what if you have to wait in line to ask? That'll take too much time. Who else can you ask? Does this hotel even have a concierge? Oh, that's right. It doesn't because you decided to save a few dollars on the hotel. Well, how is that working out for you? And when is that alarm going to go off? See? Much less stressful. The next 
question comes to us from Can't Swim 101. Ooh, whatever you do, Can't Swim, don't miss the mustard drill. Can't Swim wants to know, help, Sean, we can't choose between booking an inside cabin, a cabin with a porthole, or a cabin with a balcony. What should we choose? Oh, that is a tough question, Can't Swim. Here's a Sean secret, though. It's a quiz I give people when they ask me this question. It should make things easier for you. First, do you like to explore dark caves that feel like tombs or empty voids when you turn out the lights? If you do, an inside cabin is for you. Because they don't have windows. It's like vacationing in a panic room. Second, do you like looking out tiny round windows that remind you that the ship could sink at any moment? Then a cabin with a porthole is perfect, because it's hard to ignore the sheer terror of the locking metal frames on these portholes. You'll feel like it's the only thing between you and certain death. You'll keep peering out, checking to make sure that the waterline isn't up to your window. And third. Do you like paying the price of a Manhattan apartment for the exact same view as everyone else? Then book a cabin with a balcony. You'll get to think you're better than everyone else when you step out onto your little ocean view patio. Until you realize that no one can see you. And then you'll figure out that anybody near a railing anywhere on the whole ship has the same view you do. For no extra cost. I hope that helps, Can't Swim. And again, I cannot stress this enough. Do not miss that mustard drill. All right, I think we have time for one more question. This one is from Excited at Fire. Not sure what that's about. I'm guessing there are issues. Anyway, Excited at Fire writes, How much cash should I bring with me on a cruise? Oh, that's a great question, Excited AF. Not a lot of people think about that one ahead of time. The way things work on a cruise ship, you can use your room key card as your way to charge all your expenses to your credit card. It's easier than remembering to carry around your credit card. All you have to do is remember to carry around your room card. But you'll still want to bring some actual cash with you. You can use it for extra tips for your steward, for your porter who carries your bags, maybe a bartender if you're ordering a drink, that kind of thing. But here's a Sean secret. A lot of people bring a small stack of $1 bills that they can use for those tips. And that's fine. Make it rain, I guess. But I like to bring several rolls of pennies. You see, if you use dollar bills, it's really hard to be super precise about what your tip means. Let me give you an example. When your steward cleans your room, they may leave one of those folded towel animals on your bed. You've all seen pictures of them. They fold the towel to look like a swan or an elephant. How much should you tip for that? Well, if the animal is really well done, you can leave a tip of, say, 97 cents. That says, great job, Simon. But if your towel koala bear looks more like a polar bear, you might want to only leave a tip of two or three pennies. That sends the clear message, try harder next time, Simon. I think the steward will really appreciate that constructive feedback. In fact, the last time I did it, we never saw the steward again. I'm guessing they went somewhere to practice. Good luck, Simon. And here's a great bonus. At the end of your trip, you won't have all those heavy rolls of pennies, so your luggage will feel so much lighter when you get off the ship. Just remember to keep one or two rolls to give to your porter. I hope that helps. Let me know how it works out for you. All right, I have more questions to get to, but they'll have to wait until next time. My cruise leaves tomorrow morning, so I need to get some rest. Uh, did I check the alarm clock? Maybe I should check it one more time. This is Sean at Sea saying, come sail away! My goodness, look at the time. Oh, is it that time already, Sir Patrick? Well... If you want to get in touch with the show, send an email to podcast at comedyforecast.com or call the super secret phone line at area code 360-515-0004. You get Let's wrap this up, shall we? Right. Okay. Well, you can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Just search for Comedy Forecast, all one word with the number four. And a special thank you to all of our Patreon patrons. As always, this is Sir Patrick Stewart. And I'm Clinton. Saying, that's, that's it. it. We're, We're done, 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 done. Bye-bye.